Another primary fuel for the body and brain. You don't have enough essential fats, your brain's going to go south. One of the pillars of why we get dementia and Alzheimer's today is we lack essential fats in the brain. And one of the reasons I think an incredibly important supplement to take is algae, both green, blue-green, and phytoplankton, all three I should say, literally have the same exact fat the brain's made of. So if you don't want to lose your memory, you want to retain memory, and you want to be vigorous at 100, you better start getting fat in your brain. So I always joke about this. When I was a kid, we'd insult people by saying they're fatheads. We should actually be complimented by saying, the more fat you have in your brain, the smarter you probably are. Isn't that funny? People have been using adaptogens. How many of you have ever heard the word adaptogens? Well, wow, amazing stuff. So another proof as medicine, adaptogens. So the Russians, the Russians said, you know, we want better athletes. We want better workers. So let's now see if traditional medicine can give us that. So they sent the biggest brains, the smartest people, out to eastern Russia, where the more indigenous Russian people were. And they said, well, shouldn't we make some chemical batch over here to make our athletes better, stronger, faster? And they said, no. We know how to do that with plants. And they started a long time ago, nearly a hundred years ago, looking at adaptogens. And there were lots of questions of why the Russians were so unbelievably good in Olympic Games. Now they weren't telling you, and by the way, it's still not against the rules, that they were taking superior plants. Primal plants, as we call them, PPs. Primal plants. And these have been around for about 2,500 years. One of the products that I take every single day now is based upon adaptogens, and now we combine it with CBD oil, and it amplifies the benefit by 100 to 200 times. Adaptogen. So if you are interested in brain and body energy, beyond the normal that I'm speaking about, why Yugen is a state of the art, and you're going to see why in just a minute. So adaptogens are uniquely classed as healing plants. They help balance, restore, and protect the body. They don't force the body in any particular way, like an herb will. When I'm taking an herb, the intent of taking the chemistry from an herb is to dramatically shift the chemistry, the negative chemistry of a disorder. An adaptogen supports it. So for instance, if you have high blood pressure, it helps it to become low. If you have low blood pressure, it helps it to become normalized. They say, well, gee, plants are that smart? The amazing part is humans are not that smart. <laughs> we don't know how to do it. Of course plants are that smart. Because the universe has everything in it that we need. For example, if an adaptogen wants to put your blood pressure down, it will do it. Wants to put it up, it will do it. Now, how long have we been researching this? For a century. How much proof is there? Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of studies. And sadly, the Russians kept this close to chest for good reason. This gave them advantage. Gave them advantage. These substances help the body to adapt to change in the environment. Why do you think they were in eastern Russia? Boy, you want to be in a bad environment. In the middle of summer, they're at 60 degrees. And starting in September, it's probably 30 degrees. This is a rugged, hard place to live. And so, indigenously, over thousands of years, they figured this out. How do we live in the cold? How does our circulation go? And they didn't have pharmacies, and they didn't have allopathic doctors, but they had nature. So then they have Bruckman, smart young guy, gets out of school at the beginning of the 20th century, and they say, we want you to go over there and study with the top people we have in eastern Russia, and he literally becomes the world's authority on this stuff. 
on adaptogens. And years ago, it was presented to America, but it was too much money, and the company wasn't that great at marketing, so it sort of became a flash-in-the-pan fad, and only the elite athletes kept it up. So Americans started to have that advantage, Europeans started to have that advantage, etc. So in 1921, this is when this whole thing began with Brockman, and he became the world's leading authority on this. He's inspired and guided by Lazarvin. And Lazarvin was his mentor and his teacher. So these are names that you should remember because these are some of the godfathers of plant science. Now, one of my friends and colleagues who I work with consistently, he helps his, his degrees, two PhDs in advanced biology. When I'm reformulating and improving the life give supplements that we offer, he's a guy I trust. He works with the NIH, the CDC, and when there's any problems like the E. coli outbreak, he's the guy they call in. Because he understands you can't just throw antibiotics at things like that. You've got to boost the body with plants. So he understands the botany as well as the biochemistry of things. And his name is Mark Premier. So Mark, back I think in 1989 or 1990, was at a conference and he has one of those unique brains that is not only academically advanced, but open. That's usually an oxymoron. Usually they're academically advanced and closed. It's very rare to find academically advanced and open. Because once they know a lot, they spend the rest of their life using that as a credential. You follow that? He says, I know a lot, but not enough. So he happens to meet Breckerman, and he goes completely bonkers. He says, my God, you mean to tell me that there's plant medicine that's stronger than any other medicine, and you have a hundred years of research on this stuff? So he took the mantle, and now here in North American, Premier is a leading authority on this, and helped to formulate, again, the adaptogen formula, and he's also an international leader in CBD oil, yeah. which I take every day, as I did here at the hotel this morning before I came. Now, here are just a few. I want you to look at them, adaptogens. There's many more than this, but these are not the average plants that you go to your health store and get. And by the way, if you don't treat them correctly, when you're making these herbs, if you cook them, heat them, process them, chemicalize them, preserve them, the adaptogenic effect is gone. So you have to know how to dry these either in the sun at a very, very low temperature before you can even process them. What's the best way to get these adaptogens? Go out into the field and eat them. But sadly, most of us here are restricted in our lifestyles listening today, and we can't go out in the field and get these. It'd be far better for you. So you have to rely on ethical people. That's sort of an oxymoron, too. Ethical people to do this and to have your interest at hand. You know, it's amazing. They're willing, people are willing to ask you for copious amounts of money, but they're not willing to do the work with integrity. Isn't that sad? Give me money, and I'll give you a half-baked product. And by the way, it's short-sighted because if you give somebody a product that really doesn't work in the long run, they're not going to buy the product again. You follow? Wouldn't it be better to make a product that way? They say, wow, that's just amazing. When I started to take these things, my energy went up 25, 30%. When I'm doing my fourth lecture at 11 o'clock at night sometimes, it makes me be able to be lucid the last two hours. So now we have another area that's now becoming extraordinarily important to the future of healthcare and medicine, the cannabinoid receptor sites. 1961 in Israel. 1961 in Israel, at Hebrew University in Jerusalem. These guys said, hey, in your body you have little receivers of data and information that are fed by certain elements and nutrients that literally switch health on and off. And it was incredibly 
correct and, and respectable research. But nobody wanted to talk about that because back in the beginning of the 20th century, they made a long-time herb called cannabis illegal. So in the 1920s, they said, this is a drug, it's bad for you, you're going to go crazy, don't touch it. And little did I know until recently that doctors used to prescribe CBD oil all the time. All the time. It was a common medicine that they used. Now we speed up to the beginning of the 21st century, and we see what's happened. Now, most of it's for profit, and most of it's nonsense. But when I really want to learn about something, I go to the top people in the world. So I did. So back in June, I went and I spent a day <clears throat> at the Agricultural Science Center in Israel. You may want to jot her name down. Most important researcher in the world today is also Israeli, Nuriat Bernstein. Nuriat Bernstein showed me a product that the Israeli government supported making that reverses brain tumors with cannabinoid, receptor site, oil, called CBD oil. It will be on the market very soon. I brought Dr. Jacobus into the institute. He spent a few days with us teaching our medical team. <clears throat> Dr. Jacobus is European, works at the University of Houston, and is one of the leading authorities in the world on CBD oil. He said, this is a work in progress, as did Nuriat Bernstein. And by the way, the more work we do on this, the more exciting it is. And thank God of what happened in 1961 with Makalu at the university in Jerusalem. I will tell you loud and clear, this is going to be one of the most important medical findings in the history of medicine. We've been using this at Hippocrates for six or seven years. We bring in the Rolls-Royce products from Europe. Matter of fact, the EU certified it as the cleanest CBD oil. They don't even use machines. They press it manually by hand. And the top we were able to find here. And when you start to look, as we have done clinically, at what this does for people, it's outstanding. Now, I want to preface all of this by saying what you may read on the Internet could be right, but probably is not right. You know, Joe Smith, I took it, and my tumors fell out. Now, here's what the world's leading authorities say, and I concur with this. That this is because being a work in progress, we don't really know which oil and which breed and which species works best with which disorder. But now, with the waterways being opened for this, research is commencing. I predict over the next five to ten years, we will be able to say that this particular original species that's difficult to find, because since 1920, all of the hemp that's been grown has been grown to have higher THC, to get you loaded, to get you high. You follow? So they're having a difficult time finding the original plants. But once they find the original species of plants, we will be able to categorically say to you, this is the best one for this particular disorder. Now, when you mix this with adaptogens, again, it's a minimum of 100 times better to 150 times better. Some say 200. I'll be conservative and say 150 times better. And New Yugen is the only company in the history of man that has done this. And it's headed by who? Mark Premier, the most important chemist alive today on plants. None of these essential nutrients exist in usable forms in the flesh of animals or their milk from the bosoms of other species. The real science is plant science, not animal husbandry. It is outrageous that we take up most of the good land in the world to raise animals to eat for 40% of the world's population and destroy the environment of the planet Earth at the same time. Shame on us, shame on you, and there's no such thing, I'll be loud and clear, as organic meat. That's a lie with a big L. Read my books, Poison Poultry, 
very deception, killer fish, read them, that it's all referenced with factual science. This is what really it looks like there. And I'm giving you homework, which I gave the other night, but there's new people possibly listening. Right now for free on YouTube, you can watch a movie I petition you to watch called Dominion. Dominion. Here in this free country we live in, in most of the European countries and in Canada, it's against the law to film in a factory farm. It's a felony. So if you and I jump over the fence in a factory farm in the United States, most of Europe and Canada, they could put us in jail for 10 years. In Australia, they don't have that unbelievably Nazi-like law. So they filmed factory farms. And they did a brilliant job, and they got great filmmakers, and they have great commentary on it. Dominion. Watch Dominion. Americans eat more meat per capita than any other people on the planet because we're number one. Not only are we number one in eating meat and animal foods, we're number one on taking pharmaceutical drugs. We have 4% of the world's population. We consume 50% of the pharmaceutical drugs. Let me once again repeat to you, free Americans, 4% of the world's global population, 50% of the pharmaceutical drugs, because we are free-thinking, liberated, progressive people. And God forbid you get to the ripe old age as Brian Clement, because my age group, 95% of us take medicine, and the average is five medicines. Only 5% of us do not take medicine. Somehow they've convinced you Medicine is part of the master plan. Congratulations for being open-minded, free-thinking people. Well, I can't eat that way. I better check with my doctor to see if he says that. I, I can't take that food-based supplement. I better check with my doctor. Who are you? Oh, I'm macho. Animal food production is the world's leading cause of environmental collapse. Period. Yes, I have an electric car. Some of you progressive people have Priuses. But if you have a Prius and you're eating free-range eggs and chicken, you're part of the problem. You're fooling yourself, not me. And no thinking person. I care about my children and grandchildren, do you? And stop chewing on fish. Ancient cultures understood the principles that life force within foods could maintain human health and even restore it. They didn't have any other option. They basically said, hey, grandmom taught me that, great grandmom did that, everyone did that, because who the healers were were the women. Why? Because women have a higher ability for empathy and compassion and maternalism. And so, of course, the woman should be the healer. But again, once it became a profit-based profession, we phased the women out. And I'm proud to say now that half the women going to medical school, half the people going to medical school are women. So that's it. So now, the next step is we've got to teach them something that works. <laughs> that's it. So this is wheatgrass juice, which we're known for. We didn't come up with wheatgrass juice. It's, it's talked about thousands of years ago. And so, wheatgrass juice is so amazingly powerful. Yesterday, we went into New York City on the train. We came out of the Long Island Railway, and we instantly saw we could buy wheatgrass juice and green juice, and we drank it. In Penn Station! Oh, this is hard to do. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. This is easy to do. But you find your way to Dunkin' Donuts. They do have organic coffee. Wake the hell up. <laughs> See that? I want you to look at it once again. This was an exciting thing in my mind at one point. <laughs>
The best part of that is right in the middle, the hole. Now, I recall on numerous occasions going to the bakery. In cold parts of the year, on Sunday morning, my family would sit outside shivering with, with smoke coming out of our nose to get into the bakery, because people stood in line to get into the bakery. This is not a joke. Back in those days, we had Dunkin' Donuts. They actually would deliver at that point. They would come with a delivery truck to your house. You didn't even have to leave the house. And we would get a dozen donuts. And we'd think it was for the family. My grandfather and I, by the time we got home, polished off all the dozen donuts. And I remember my grandmother and mother saying, where are the donuts? Oh, we stood in line, but there was no way to get in. <laughs> Lack of nutrients from food precipitate disease. Don't you get it? If I, by the way, say, I'm going to spend $10 million building a house right here in Long Island on the ocean. It's going to be the best view in Long Island. And as I'm building the house and putting $10 million into the house, I forget to put a frame in the house. So we all move in. We come with our Bentleys, our Rolls Royces. We move into the house, and we're laying there the first night, and the house collapses because it doesn't have nutrients in it. Darwin said it correctly, survival of the fittest. The weak will perish, biblically. Weak means starvation. Weak means weak cells. Weak cells mean weak bones, weak organs, weak brain. You will perish. You're going to eat a donut, eat the hole in the middle. That's the only part that you want. Now let's talk about the history of us discovering that food reversed disease. So back in the 1700s, there was this really smart surgeon, Lind, and Lind was a Scottish guy. Now when I was studying this for my book, Killer Fish, and also Supplements Exposed, I was stunned to find out the only people that ever made money hundreds of years ago were sailors. And you know why they made money? Because 50% of them would always die on long voyages. So when the wife and the children lined up and the sailor was going on to the ship and they said goodbye, it was really goodbye for 50% of them. Now, this wonderful surgeon starts to notice, hey, where's Joe? Where's Harry? Where's Charlie? Oh, they're dead. We had to throw them over the side. And he starts thinking about it. Remember, hundreds and hundreds, nobody ever thought about it. Probably the Vikings never thought about it. They were Swedish. <laughs> but he starts thinking about it. And he says, you know, what I notice is every once in a while we go to these tropical ports, and when the guys get back on the boat after they've eaten citrus, nobody dies at that point. So this is a pretty... Easy next step. He says, maybe it's citrus that does it. Now, nobody knew what nutrition was. Remember, nutritional science didn't happen until when? 1928. We're talking about 1747. Yeah. So he basically says, limes. Limes are the best. And limes are not that perishable. I can actually put baskets of limes on the ships. And people can take these months-long voyages and nobody's going to die. And this is where the English got the nickname limeys. Because when they would come into port, they'd smell like limes, but they were the only sailors not dying. Isn't that amazing? So we wiped out scurvy by realizing what we now call vitamin C. We didn't know it was a vitamin C. We didn't really discover vitamin C till the 20th century. It was in citrus. 